So hi everyone, welcome to another Sunday Zoom meeting and um, in a little bit we'll we'll carry on and we'll tackle some of the miracle principles but I thought maybe we might begin um, by reviewing our whole forgiveness process because this is the this is the entire purpose of doing the course. I think when we begin the course at first, we're very interested in the intellectual aspect of it and understanding the metaphysics and how could the tiny mad idea happen and all that sort of crack. And it's really a delaying mechanism for the thing that we actually should be doing and that we could be doing absolutely straight away. And that's this forgiveness process. And we've been talking a lot about the way, well, I guess the way Jesus taught this. Um, in terms of a forgiveness process, the Holy Spirit asks, but this of you, open all the darkened rooms of your mind, let him look at all your thoughts and feelings as they come up, um, and he's the light, and you bring the darkness, and they cannot coexist, and it's the way that Ken taught it, and our metaphor that we have been um, beating <laughs> is being in the cinema with Jesus, or being above the battleground with Jesus, and the entire thrust of this is that you have a split mind. You're like a computer that can work on two different operating systems. So the computer is, you know, sort of lined up with one operating system. Let's say it's Windows. And that's a set of instructions and sort of like assumptions and mathematics. And, you know, the computer behaves a certain way based on that. And then similarly, you can um, have the same computer work on a completely different operating system like Linux. I'm not sure how effective that metaphor is going to be because our sort of average age here is well over 65. <laughs> uh, but you'll have to take my word for it. Uh, consciousness is um, the first split that was introduced after the apparent separation. The idea of this um, self that could be other than God or separate from God, or that could know itself in relationship um, to God. Uh, consciousness. And and then, you know, uh, the nature of this split is that it keeps splitting and consciousness split into the Holy Spirit and the ego. And um, OK, we won't go through the whole <laughs> four, four stages of splitting just now again. We've done it loads of times, but it ends up down here in the world with all of us apparent fragments. And we all in the same way, holographically, have a split mind. Um, so we have um, one operating system that believes in separateness and separate identity. Uh, and we have one um, that doesn't, that sees itself in everything, which is the Holy Spirit. So we have a split mind. And I guess before we start doing the course, um, we assume the thing that we are is this body and this psychological body this insane voice talking to itself, this personality completely programmed and manufactured by every experience we've ever had, including all of our likes and dislikes, uh, including the people we're going to like in life and including the people that we're not going to like in life. You know, one of the, um, the things that you'll often see in the new age circles is, you know, oh, if you meet someone and you get a bad feeling, you need to trust your intuition on that. <laughs> Well, the course doesn't say that. <laughs> the course doesn't say that at all. The course would say the only reason you're getting a bad feeling about that person is potentially because they're wearing a shirt that looks like your brother's uh, when he dunked your head in the toilet when you were five. You know, the only reason that person looks sketchy to you is because it reminds you of one of your uncles that you never liked. So your entire per personality, or what you think of as your personality and your likes and your dislikes and your entire set of values and your beliefs, um, nonsense, nothing to do with you whatsoever. The insane voice talking to itself in your mind, <laughs> nothing to do with you whatsoever. And that's the really important point that we are supposed to get from the earliest of the lessons with Jesus. 
when he tells us um, only the thoughts you think with God are your real thoughts. So none of your personal thoughts, not the ones that you think are bad. Um, they're not your real thoughts. <laughs> and not the ones that you think are good and holy. They're not your real thoughts either. As Jesus tells us in the course, the self you made is not the son of God. And therefore, this self does not exist at all. Nothing thinks or does means anything. It is unreal. Nothing more than that. And so Jesus presents us with a course. And he says, this is what you think you are. And it's not what you are. It's a decision that you're making. Now, we didn't know that. We didn't know this thing I think I am is a decision I've made and I could choose otherwise. You know, I think I am this thing, whether it's nature or nurture. I am this separate self. I am this voice talking to itself and commenting on everything in my mind. I am in this bag of flesh and bones. And Jesus is saying, no, you're not that. It's a delusion <laughs> you've entertained about yourself. Um, and whenever you're ready, my brother, choose again. So he tells us we're a decision maker in mind. Consciousness is the mind that splits. So consciousness is the decision maker. And it's split between wrong minded consciousness, the ego, and right minded consciousness which is the Holy Spirit. And both minds are always simultaneously present. You already are the right mind, one with the Holy Spirit. That's already true. It's just that it, your two minds are dissociated from one another. Okay, so it's one or the other. You can only identify as one. Either you are this body and this insane voice talking to itself, or you are that which is aware of the body and the insane voice talking to itself and feelings that are getting generated, but doesn't identify with it. The right mind, non-judgmentally aware of the wrong mind. It's one or the other. Um... So if you like, the, the wrong mind isn't really aware of the right mind at all. <laughs> but the right mind is aware of the wrong mind. But you can only be one of them. And so Jesus is training us in the course to, to be able to identify as the right mind we are. Now, it's always present in your mind because you're always noticing your thoughts and you're always noticing how you're feeling. Because what is there to depression other than the noticing of it? Is there anything to depression other than the noticing of it? What is there to sadness other than the noticing of it? So the noticer is always present. Awareness is always present. A non-judgmental observer is always present. That's the right mind, but it's dissociated. But we can take a step back at any time from identifying as this story of who I am, this story of me, this story of the unhappy, victimized me. <laughs> um, we can, at any given moment, we can fall back. We can fall back and we can witness the stories and the thoughts and the feelings that are going on. We can be the noticer of it. And that's us stepping back into our right mind. Because when you fall back from your ego, 
you fall back to something, which is the right mind itself. Because the decision maker must be in one mind or another. So either it's the decision maker identified with the ego and thinking it's a body and an insane voice talking to itself with a story, or else it is a non-judgmental observer of the ego in the Holy Spirit. So it must be one or the other, and it cannot be both at the same time. So there's no such thing as a decision maker as a part of your mind. <laughs> There's just the decision maker identified as ego or the decision maker identified as Holy Spirit. And Jesus is saying, you know, you who think you are an ego, um, you, can, you can choose again. You can, you can join with me, who is the light in your mind that will never go out as a thought of perfect love. You can join with that in your mind and together we can look at your ego happening. You don't have to fix your ego. You don't have to change your ego. You don't have to stop your ego. You don't have to shout it down. You don't have to suffocate it. You don't have to smother it. Um, let's look at it. Because if you look at your ego with me, you're not your ego. I will teach you that you are not what we are looking at. You are what is looking with me. You are what is always in the cinema with me. Which is what Jesus means when he says in the course, uh, we but see the journey from the point at which it ended. Looking back, imagining we make it once again, reviewing mentally what has gone by the noticer in your mind of your ego is what's being talked about there in that passage. Because it's outside of time and space. And becoming become acquainted with your right mind, becoming acquainted of what you are with Jesus in your mind. That's the name of the game in the course. That's the entire purpose of the workbook that you have a way of stepping out of identification as a person. Because God didn't make people. And that's the purpose of our workbook. And that's the purpose of us drilling these forgiveness lessons uh, about being in the cinema with Jesus. The part of your mind that can notice your ego without judging it or justifying it to simply witness it, that part of you is not ego. That's the part of you that's already awake in the dream. That's your lucid dreamer right there. And so our practice is all the time, you know, our, our, our discipline, is really drilling into our head and, and really getting this into our head. You are not a person. You are not a human being in the world. That is your delusion. If you're going to practice this course, you have to change what you're identifying as. Because if you try and practice this course as a human being, it's not going to work. You must begin to accept the understanding that you are spirit. Because this course makes no sense otherwise. There is no world. That is the central thought this course attempts to teach. Now, if there's no world, that means there's no you that you think you are. And there's no story of how you came to be who you are. <laughs> there's no body. There's no personality, which could only develop as a result of the past. None of that's true. 
So that's the virtual reality um, simulation that we have going on. And Jesus is giving us a way out of the matrix. So if we want this lifetime to count, we've got to shift our identification. You're not a body. That's Jesus' most repeated phrase in the entire course. I'm not a body. I'm free. I'm still as God created me. I am not a body. I am free. I am the light of the world. The body isn't the light of the world. The insane voice talking to itself in your head isn't the light of the world. They don't exist. <laughs> you exist. But you're not what you think you are. And so we're not doing this course in order to be happy. Your egos. We're not doing the course to build a better mousetrap to live in. You know, in the film, The Matrix, it's like, do you want to take the red pill? Do you want to take the blue pill? <laughs> you know, do you want to keep believing in the simulation or do you want to get unplugged from the simulation? So as course students, we got to make that decision, which is how I want to get unplugged from the simulation. I want to learn that I'm spirit. And it's very crucial to understand that none of your personal thoughts mean anything. Nothing. That's why Jesus says, I see only the past. Look around the room. And you are not seeing what's there. You are seeing your thoughts and memories about the things that are there. You're seeing labels. But you're not seeing what's there. Jesus says he could look at a table. <laughs> Without all that past, it would give you the secret of the universe. That's what the real world is. Looking at a world which is not seeing through the filter of your past learnings. You know, ultimately, it's a course about coming into the present moment without your past learnings. Buddhists call that the beginner mind. It's why when you have a new experience of something, let's say somewhere you've never visited before, suppose you've never been to the Grand Canyon or you've never been to an amazing waterfall. Um, you know, when you go there, you have no labels and judgments and likes and dislikes about it yet. And you go and you have this, you know, expansive experience. It really moves you makes you feel inspired, which means in spirit. Um, and it does. And you see the beauty in it. it. Might make you feel closer to God. But go another three times, you're not going to have that anymore because you've no beginner's mind. Now you're not seeing the waterfall. Now you're not seeing the Grand Canyon. You're seeing your ideas about it. You're seeing your memories about it. And you're not seeing what's there anymore. So the ultimate place we're going with the course is whereby you, you, you don't depend on your past learnings. <laughs> you allow something um, to tell you of its being each and every time you encounter it. Okay, but how do you do that? You get out of the mind that thinks it knows what anything is for. You don't have to silence it. You just have to not identify with it. Your course practice is learning not to identify with any of the thoughts that are going on in your head. They're all wrong. Your ego doesn't know what anything is for, but it's 
absolutely certain that it does. And it's wrong about everything. <laughs> absolutely everything. It's right about nothing. That's where we're going with this course. That's what it means when Jesus talks about, you know, rules for decision. And he talks about not making decisions on your own. Ultimately, where this is going is understanding. The voice in your head is insane. It thinks it's a body. It thinks it lives in a world that doesn't exist. It thinks there's separateness, which cannot exist in God's creation. And based on all that faulty programming, it, it, it thinks it understands existence. <laughs> and it's wrong about everything. So A Course in Miracles is a way for us to step out of that deluded operating system and into one that makes sense. That makes sense of separate, the, the apparent separation that we're seeing. Step into our right mind. The one that remembers God and oneness. And, you know, with the help of the miracle, it looks on the world and the miracle reminds it that what it sees is false. It looks on devastation and the miracle reminds the mind that what it sees is false. This mind watches the dream figures come and go, shift and change, suffer and die, and it's not deceived by what it sees. Unity alone is not a thing of dreams. And this is what God's teachers hold to. The one Christ, the glass that never shatters, despite the movie of shattered glass. That's what our right mind is. Okay, so our forgiveness process, the one that we've been drilling, it's very important. Okay, look, you're going to start off doing it this way, but you know, you're all big girls and big boys now. <laughs> you're training pants. We've moved past that phase a few weeks ago. Okay, we're taking this seriously now. It's time to it's time to stop wanting to stay asleep. You're not the insane voice talking to itself in your mind and everything it tells you is wrong. Your spirit. OK, we're not doing forgiveness so that we're going along like an ego and we get upset about something and then we go, oh, right. And now I'm an upset ego. Let me use a forgiveness process so I can be a happier insane voice talking to myself. See, we start the course that way. That's what we think it's saying. We think it's saying I, Keith, can choose between the ego and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I, this separate self that thinks it has private thoughts, this insane voice talking to itself, this body that doesn't exist, um, I will choose between the ego and the Holy Spirit. No. So Keith, this collection of likes and dislikes and ideals and values, all based on the past, is the ego. Or at least it's a manifestation of the ego thought system. And it's not real. And so the real practice of this course is for you to get in touch with what you are with Jesus in your mind, what you are in the cinema. That's what this course is about. It's not about being a holy ego. And it's not about healing the world and fixing the world. That's where course students can get very off track. Okay, your job is not to look at a world that needs to be healed. Your job is to see the invulnerable, inviolable, holy and whole Son of God shining as the truth behind the lying images. That's your job. 
And you can only do that when you don't identify with the insane voice talking to itself in your mind or anything it's trying to tell you, that you step back and you be a witness to it. And from that space, you are the light of the world. As soon as you let go of your identification as an ego, you fall back into the arms of the Holy Spirit. It's one or the other. And once you're there, not Keith, the me that was identifying as Keith and has now fallen back from that identity as Keith, this non-judgmental observer, this awareness, this witness, this noticer, sees itself shining, shining as the truth behind all the apparently disturbing and distressing images of the movie. So in our forgiveness process, if we think our brother has done something on us and upset us, then all that means is I have attacked the Christ in me, what I am in the cinema with Jesus, what I am as awareness. I've attacked that, that truth, that light. I've attacked that light of the world uh, in order to identify again as an insane voice talking to itself in a body. And because I've done that, instead of seeing that light shining behind my brother's body, now I will attack Christ a second time to see him as an ego. A guilty ego <laughs> that makes my ego look better. Okay, if I hadn't attacked the Christ in me, if I hadn't left the cinema, I would see the light of Christ shining behind my brother's body no matter what it's doing. I would see my brother's ego and what it's doing and look straight past it and see the light. If I'm not doing that, it means I have attacked the Christ in me, I have left the cinema, and I have re-engaged with the matrix. <laughs> I've chosen to be this separate thing. I have plunged into the self-hatred and guilt of separateness, which is there since the apparent separation, and immediately gets projected out. The hungry dogs of fear are sent out going, bring me back a patsy. I can blame for this. So our brother comes along and our brother does something. And instead of seeing the light behind the shadow, um, because we've chosen to be a shadow, we make our brother into a shadow. And we agree with our brother that he's an ego. And we agree that we're an ego. And we reinforce egodom. And we keep sin, guilt, and fear real. And we continue to block the memory of God from our mind. And there's an alternative. You can notice when anger and upset or irritation or jealousy or insecurity comes up in you and go, aha, I've left the cinema. I think I'm a human being. I forgot I'm a spirit. I think I am this insane voice talking to itself in my mind that knows nothing, that has all this wrong information about the nature of existence and thinks it knows everything and it knows it doesn't know anything. <laughs> and I can fall back. I can fall back. All I got to do is let go of the ego's hand. All I've got to do is say, not this. All I've got to step back and be a noticer of all those thoughts happening that are wrong and all the guilt coming up. And, and once I'm looking at it with no judgment, none, I'm a mere witness to it. I am the awareness of it. I am with Jesus. I have gone where he is. I am a right mind. And 
if I look from this place at the guilt that's coming up, it will vanish. So that guilt I saw in my brother and my pain and my hurt and my misery, the minute I identify as what's with Jesus and not a body or an insane voice talking to itself, the minute I do that, it vanishes as the illusion it is. That's the holy instant. And from this space as awareness, as the noticer, as the non-judgmental observer of the ego with the Holy Spirit, I see myself as the light of the world shining in everything and everyone. However, <laughs> in our practice of forgiveness, it's not going to happen just like that all the time. So we're going to step back. We're going to stop believing the insane voice talking to itself in our mind about how the world did this to me. How I was a perfectly happy separate self that threw heaven away and God's love back in his face and made a world to hide from him where love couldn't enter. Um, that I was perfectly happy until my brother did that which is what the insane voice in our head wants us to believe. So there's no cause in the world. Whatever is happening is going to stimulate what's already inside of me. And so all I do is I, I step back, I fall back into the arms of Jesus to join my perception to his, not to the insane voice talking to itself in my mind. I choose against joining my perception with the insane voice that's still talking to itself in my mind and its emotions, its guilt. I choose against identifying with it. I don't stop it. I don't touch it. I don't identify with it. And I fall back into the arms of Jesus and join my perception to his. To be a non-judgmental observer of it. Jesus' great promise is, you come, you come where I am, we're going to look at your guilt and suffering and pain and misery and self-hatred coming up and watch it vanish with me. Okay, but in practice, we're going to be terrified of letting go of our identification with the insane voice talking to itself in our mind. And this is why forgiveness looks and waits and judges not. We join Jesus and we look at the insane voice talking to itself and the emotions that are coming up and we wait. We wait until this looking with him diminishes our fear of not being the insane voice talking to itself in our mind, of letting that go as an identity. We look, we wait, we judge ourselves not until this looking diminishes the fear and we let go of the ego's hand. And we're ready to not be a body and an insane voice talking to itself. And we're ready to be what Jesus is. And the minute you do that, the whole thing vanishes. Can't stand. So that won't happen straight away. <laughs> At least not in the beginning, definitely not with the big stuff. A lot of fear is going to come up of not being a separate self. Um, but this process of looking with Jesus, it is inevitable at some point. It might be five minutes. It could be five hours. It could be two days. At some point, you're going to identify a spirit and not a body and an insane voice talking to itself. The minute you do that, all that upset is gone.
Now, that doesn't mean that you'll identify as spirit forever. <laughs> Something else will drag you from your identity as spirit to identify as an ego again. And the whole process just begins again. Okay, so I just wanted to give that as a different way of talking about what we've been talking about all along, because repetition is absolutely essential. And it's so important to hear this from as many different angles as possible. Um, but the big thing I really, really, really want you to understand now today and really get, because this is the hardest thing for people to get, is that you're not the voice talking to itself in your mind. No matter how much you identify with it, no matter how scared you are not to be it, <laughs> You never were that. You know, your activity of imagining yourself to be a body and an insane voice talking to itself, a separate self, your activity of imagining yourself to be that is veiling from you your right-minded identity as awareness, as the noticer as the non-judgmental observer with the Holy Spirit, the light of the world that sees itself in everything and everyone. And we don't have to let it go all at once. We can let it go, you know, one forgiveness lesson at a time. Um, the course is forgiveness is not forgiveness unless it's forgiving what never happened. I would say 90% of course students, well, when they talk about forgiveness, they're still talking about forgiveness to destroy. They're forgiving what happened. And we've really got to lock into our minds this idea that we forgive our brother for what he never did. That we forgive the world for what never happened. Because what you are when you step back into the arms of Jesus or the Holy Spirit, isn't a body. So what happens to the body is not happening to you. And it's not the ego. So it's never been diminished by anything anyone ever said or anyone ever did. That's the place where we forgive what never happened. So we must learn to fall back to that space where we're not, where we're choosing to let go of the ego's hand. And we take the Holy Spirit's and we, and we embrace our identity as spirit and not a story about a body in a world that never happened. Okay, <laughs> I think we'll throw it open for some questions at this point in time. Is there anything okay. in the chat box, Eli? Um. No, I think the chat box has been handled pretty well because there was a little question there, but you answered it with everything you were saying and a few people okay. have commented in that way. So, okay, okay. let's go to Kirsty. You have your hand up. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Go for it, Kirsty. Thanks, Keith. Thanks, Eli. Yeah, um, the unbelievably powerful statement you just made there, Keith, right at the beginning, which was um, you cannot practice the course as a human being because it's just not going to work. And that's just such an extraordinary statement because, of course, I've been practicing the course as a human being ever since I picked it up. And then I suddenly realised how the ego gets me and has been getting me for years. When I have people in my life who I have a personal relationship with who, um, you know, I feel attacked by or betrayed by or something like that, then that's a very obvious, um, very obvious um, indicator that I need to practice forgiveness. And I'll go straight into my forgiveness practices. But where I don't, where the ego really tricks me, where the thing that makes me the most angry and really triggers me is with Course in Miracles teachers who misteach the Course and publish books on 
how to create abundance in the world with the Course in Miracles. And that triggers, that causes me more anger than, for example, my ex-husband. It's just a, an absolute trigger for me. But just as you said that, um, you know, don't practice the course of human being. It just suddenly occurred to me, this is the, the, the whole thing, all these teachers who teach dualism and that kind of thing. That's all part of my split mind, isn't it? That's all part of my own, my own forgiveness process rather than a, an obstacle. It is actually part of my path. Does that make sense? Yes. The first thing we have to understand, um, you know, Kenneth Wapnick always said there are, once you've done the workbook, you really only need two lessons. Is my camera working, guys? Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry, I can't see it anymore. I look invisible to myself. <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, Kenneth Wapnick says, once you've done the workbook, you just really need to remember two lessons. First lesson is, I'm never upset for the reason I think. It's always a lie. And the second lesson is I can see peace instead of this. So really, um, all that's going on, Kirsty, and this is in every situation, is that you have attacked the noticer, the right mind, the Christ in you, in order to identify as a body and an insane voice talking to itself in the world. And you have plunged into the horror and self-loathing and hatred of separateness. All those emotions are there because of what we believe we did to God. It was him or me, and we, we murdered God, we brought down heaven, we destroyed oneness to be this separate thing. And so once, once you leave the non-judgmental observer identity with the Holy Spirit, and you identify as a body, a psychological and physical body in the world, once you've done that, you plunge into all that horror. And the minute you do, it's going to get denied and it's going to get projected out onto the world, onto all your brothers. And so then you're going to say, you Course in Miracles teachers that teach it this way, you did this to me. You put this awfulness inside of me all this rage and murderousness and pain and hurt, you did this to me. No, they didn't. <laughs> it's been there since the separation from God. And we made a world so we would never have to acknowledge it's based on what we did to God. So that we could see that self-hatred and self-loathing of being this murderer, that we would see it outside ourselves in the world. That's why we made the world. So step one of our forgiveness process is always, you, your, your first thing you notice is, I must have decided wrongly because I'm not at peace. There's somebody teaching the course wrong <laughs> and I feel upset and angry. And outraged. <laughs> okay, so that, that, that's your first. Okay, so I'm not at peace, so I've decided wrongly. What did I decide wrongly? I decided to not be spirit. I decided to be this ego self and this ego identity. I decided to divorce the Holy Spirit and be this. And the awfulness was there. It got denied and it got projected out on the world so I could point all around me and go, you did this to me. You put this awfulness in me. You put this emotion in me. So that's what we all do. That's the process. And guess what? That's the way home. That does not mean we have failed the course. That does not mean um, we have gone off track. That means we're on track. Because we notice it. So we look at our hatred of teachers that teach the course a certain way and we reverse projection. We understand that hatred was in me before the world was made. It's the reason the world was made. 
And now that that hatred has come up and I can see it shining, you know, that that judgment of my brother, I can see his guilt shining in front of me and it's mine. It's, it's hidden now in plain sight. This unconscious guilt about murdering God that I don't even remember uh, and can't undo. Now it's shining, shining in these course teachers. I can see that guilt and it's mine. And so I take it back from them. You know, where we're at is I'm innocent and they're guilty. Okay, but we reverse projection. And now they're innocent because they're not an ego or what an ego is doing. They are Christ. And I and I, the guilt is mine for being an ego. And now, now, my deciding wrongly is overturned. Now, I choose against deciding to be the ego. And I go back to identifying a spirit as awareness, as a non-judgmental observer of the ego with Jesus. I fall back. And I look at that hatred and guilt inside of me. And the minute I join my perception with Jesus, the minute I disengage my perception from the insane voice talking to itself, saying the world did this to me, the minute I do that, it vanishes. Now, it might take a while for my fear to diminish, for me to completely join my perception to Jesus's. But once that happens, it's gone. And it will never, ever come back again. That scrap of guilt is now undone for eternity. That same scrap of guilt that came up when I was like a baby, when I was 10, when I was 20, when I was 30, the same thing that kept coming up and kept getting projected onto the world. And I would say, world, you did this to me. And the, so it would, it would be, so it, you know, ideas leave not their source. So that, that would not get undone. And it will go on forever, except that we have the course except that we can notice I must have decided wrongly because I'm not a piece. I think I'm an ego. I'm not spirit. What the hell? So I'm deluded. And because I'm, I, I have denied my spiritual identity, I am, I, am, I am the ego. And if I am an ego, it means God was attacked. You see, it's one or the other. Either perfect oneness is true, or my separate self is true. They cannot both be true. It's one or the other. Either heaven was never destroyed and God's son never separated from him or fragmented, or I am this insane voice talking to itself and its body, and that means God was murdered. Heaven was brought down. Love was destroyed forever. It's one or the other. So I can't be an ego. I can't be this separate thing without the guilt of having destroyed heaven. Because I must have destroyed heaven. Heaven must have been destroyed if I am what I am identifying as. And as soon as that happens, I look out into the world. I, you know, send the hungry dogs of fear out. <laughs> All that guilt is projected out. Find me something I can blame for this awful guilt. And so that's all that's going on, Kirsty, with, with, with the course teachers and with every single thing that goes on in your life. There's no cause in the world. All that's going to happen is that the world is going to play, the movie's going to play, and it's going to stir up what's already inside of you. And this is the journey home. This is why... You know, on the one hand, the ego wrote a script, which is a perfect script, which disguises our guilt perfectly by hiding it in everyone else apart from ourselves and in situations. And then the Holy Spirit uses the exact same script. <laughs> because the fatal flaw in it is that guilt is hidden in plain sight. My unconscious guilt is actually shining in all my brothers where I can undo it. So I'm never upset for the reason I think. Guilt is not coming up in me because people teach the course a certain way. Um, guilt is coming up in me because I'm in my wrong mind. I've denied my identity as spirit to be a body. And so I undo projection. I fall back. 
And I look at the guilt without projecting it and saying to the world, you did this to me by understanding it's my guilt coming up. No projection. And and once I join my perception to the Holy Spirit of Jesus as a non-judgmental observer, identifying a spirit and not a body, it vanishes. Does that make sense? It does, Keith. Very, very, you know, very, very coherent uh, explanation. Thank you so much for that. One no thing I'd just like to ask, if yeah. I just ask something. Um, where, you know, the course is all about willingness, isn't it? You have to be willing. You've got to be willing to do it. And there's a kind of conscious willingness with me. You know, my willingness, my conscious willingness is, is absolute, but I think there's, a, there's an unconscious deep resistance to it. And I was just, I'm on lesson 59, is the review. And on, on the review of 42, God is my strength, vision is his gift. It says, let me be willing to exchange my pitiful illusion of seeing for the vision that is given by God. And I just meditate on that today. And I just realized how unwilling I am even though I'm really, really willing on a conscious level, and I would in that matrix um, thing, I would take the, the, you know, the, I can't remember what colour pill, the, the red pill or whatever, I would just swallow yes. it down. <laughs> but, but actually, I was becoming aware of my unwillingness. And I'm just, you, I think probably but you may super. have had that experience. And but then suddenly super. you became willing, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. The only thing you have to do with your unwillingness is look at it without judging it. Okay. The only thing you have to do with your unwillingness is be the noticer of it. You don't have to fight it. You don't have to change it. You don't have to do anything like that. The only willingness you have to have is to notice it. And guess what? The minute you notice it, your right-minded identity is present in your mind. You know, so what just do I saying, do? oh, I'm unwilling is kind of observing my unwillingness is undoing that unwillingness. Just that very well, act. Thing, of... See, the thing is, you already are the right mind, Kirsty. Like the atonement has already worked. OK, so the fact that Kirsty is resistant is kind of irrelevant <laughs> because there's no Kirsty. <laughs> OK, so it's not how do I fix Kirsty? It's let me notice Kirsty without judging her. And now my right identity is present. It's as simple as that. All you ever, look at, as Jesus says to us in the course, you only ever have one problem, which is the decision to separate yourself from the Holy Spirit as a non judgmental observer and identify as an ego. That's the only problem you have. And the only answer to everything, there is nothing more, is undo your mistaken decision to identify as an ego and identify as spirit and the Holy Spirit, and all problems vanish. They're not all, problems are not all solved, they vanish. So the minute you identify as a noticer of Kirsty's resistance, you're not Kirsty anymore, and there's no resistance. Got it. So again, we're not here to become holy egos or fix our egos or be better, more effective egos in the world. That's the trap. You're here to identify as something other than the ego, which needs do nothing because it's already saved. The yeah. only problem we have is that we think we're something we're not. And the solution to everything is choose against that. Okay. And, and you don't have to choose for something else. All you have to do is choose against that. Because once you fall back from that, you fall into the arms of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So the only thing we ever have to do with our resistance is notice it and then identify as the noticer and not what it's noticing. 
Brilliant, Key. Brilliant. Thank you so much. No problem. Where we go next, Eli? Marina, you have your hand up. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. You have the stage, yes. Marina. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I have kind of two questions. One is not, yes, it's a question. I think I had some kind of grasping about this noticing what's going on inside me. Because just the other day, I had all this reaction bubbling in, in myself. And I stopped myself and I said, okay, this, this is the moment <laughs> I have to apply <laughs> all, everything Kit said and the course, of course. Brilliant. But I noticed and I said to myself, and I don't know if I did it correctly, but anyway, I did something. I noticed that this was the guilt coming up. And I realized... Right it was guilt coming up and then i didn't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> that's the ego's jedi lost. mind trick right? yes I that's the ego's jedi mind trick no, no what no what what, yes, what do i do what ego's jedi mind trick so let's deal with that marina right the, you, so listen it is brilliant that you had emotional turmoil going on and that you noticed this is guilt coming up. That's a great start, Marina, right? That's a brilliant start because, you know, part of you stepped out of identification with the whole thing to notice it, right? Now, the second thing you have to notice is that this guilt coming up in me is the guilt of being a separate thing. It's the guilt of being a body. But do I have to process thing. into my mind this thought? Do I have to think this thought to... If you don't, if you don't, Marina, you're going to project blame. You're going to say, this is coming up in me because of my health. This is coming up in me because of my age. This is coming up in me because this other body did something to me. This is happening because of what happened when I was five. If you don't say to yourself, this is the guilt of separateness from God coming up in me. You are going to blame something else. And that's projection. Does okay. That make sense? At this point, then, when I realized this is the guilt coming up in myself for the separate from the separation from God, there is something I'm missing here. Like, do I have to know what? The basis of this guilt. I don't see this. I, I don't. No, 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 no. Now no. I am Marina, at the don't, point. No, no, no. I don't complicate. No, 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 no. Shh. Don't complicate it. You've just said it. This is the guilt of separateness from God. Do not complicate it further. You do not need to do that. Do not tie yourself in knots. You just have to know. This was in me before the world was made, and it's separate. It's it's the guilt of separateness from God which never happened, but it's the guilt of separateness from God. That is all you need to do, Marina. Do not tie yourself in knots further. Can I just take this like kind of a mantra or a prayer or something just to remind, to say this word to myself? Because otherwise I kind of get lost. I don't know what to do else. Okay, so listen, here's your mantra. I am not upset for the reason I think. I am upset because I think I'm a separate being. That's it. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank that, you very your, much. That's your mantra. Okay. And I and have. Then, a... And then. I really like that. <laughs> and then what you want to do is you want to fall back, Marina. You want to be that which can look at this upset without judging it, without justifying it, that will simply notice it happening. Keep looking. Okay. This is oh, the yes. process. Don't, keep, oh, yes. don't, don't take your look. eyes off it. All right. Don't take your because, eyes off it. Okay. Because right. the, the other day when this guild was bubbling up, I, I, did, I felt like kind of disconnected from it because I was looking. But then I didn't feel this big relief. And everything was just uh, gone, disappeared. <laughs> no, no. Okay, but did you hear what we were saying earlier on? That's not going to happen straight away right. because of your fear right. 
your fear of not being Marina, the body and the world that never happened. You're right. going to have too much fear of letting that go. So what you want to do is you want to join with Jesus as a thought of perfect love in your mind. OK, whatever way you want to do that, you hold that thought of what perfect love is. OK, and you join with that thought at the same time. That all this guilt is flying. OK, and and that's what you do. OK. Yes, it makes sense yeah, because the, the process of looking puts me in a position with Jesus. Just the, the process automatically, of looking. Automatically. Automatically. Yes. yes. And you don't even have to go looking for him. The minute you look at your thoughts and feelings without taking them seriously, without identifying with them, without judging them, without justifying them, the minute you step into a noticing of them, you fall back into the arms of Jesus. But it's still helpful to hold that thought of perfect love in your mind as you fall back, especially in the beginning. Every little mm -hmm. helps. Mm. And, and you hold that thought of perfect love in your mind as you simply notice the fireworks of your guilt coming up and getting cleared. I'm not That's at the stage. Do. I'm not at the stage. Not yet. <laughs> to be perfectly uh, with, with this thought of love, I, I, uh, I think maybe practicing it. It will come, but not at this no, point. No, no, no. Because look, we, we've covered this lots of times, um, Marina. You don't start off feeling the burning love of the Holy Spirit and Jesus in your mind. Nobody does. No, right. I didn't, and nobody does. All okay. right. You've heard me say many times that in the beginning, that felt nebulous. It felt gray. Uh, it felt nothing spectacular. It was more a leap of faith than a, a, an absolute conviction in connection. But I'll tell you one thing. You put all your attention on that thought of perfect love in your mind every time your ego um, throws up its guilt for clearing. You, you put all your attention on that and just say to yourself, but what does all that guilt have to do with the love and peace of Jesus in my mind? And you put your attention on that mm. love and peace and mm. it will start to shine. Okay, there is nothing surer, but that's your little willingness. That's your little bit of faith, which says, I'm not going to get sucked into this ego drama. I am going to put my attention on a thought of perfect love in my mind and watch the fireworks with it. And just put your attention on that thought of perfect love and it will start to shine. That's your practice, Marina. Right. I still have another little question. The tiny med idea, is it the thing that contains all the script of the ego? Is it, is, everything is in that tiny med, med idea, right? Yes, yes. So when we joined, we, when we accepted that, we accept the whole script in that moment. The carpet. Everything happened all at once. Yes, with Everything the script. Happened all at once. Mm -hmm. With okay, okay. Everything happened okay. all at once, and everything was undone all at once. We're just inside that tiny tick of time. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Kit. No problem. Thank Where you. we go next, Eli? Okay, we can go to Kirsten. You have your hand up. You can unmute yourself. Okay. Hello. Hi, Kirsten. Hi there. So um, I'm hearing you and everything you're saying and something that I'm having a hard time with letting go of in terms of the guilt that I sort of feel left with is so is that my my father died in September, my, you know, in, in, the, in the dream. And um, he, you know, he was he was not very nice and stuff, but um. And now that I understand the course better, I'm having such a hard time forgiving myself for not forgiving him because, you know, it, and I, under, I know as I'm just stuck because mm -hmm. um, I only knew forgiveness to destroy and I was kind of in between and he had called me about three weeks before he passed away and he was at, sort of asking for forgiveness and I sort of, 
I said, um, dad, it's over. Don't worry about it. I forgive you. You know, I just didn't want to rehash anything, but now I feel still after I'm still guilt. I feel guilty that I, that I want his, it's like, I know this is a dream, but it's like, I want his body here so I can say, dad, I really do forgive you. I mean, it's very difficult to forgive myself for not being able to forgive. Forgive. I really, okay. I mean, yeah. So Kirsten, the formula never changes. No matter what the circumstances, the formula never changes. I am never upset for the reason I think. Okay. You have attacked the Christ in you to identify as an ego identity, a body with an insane voice talking to itself in a history. And the awful guilt is there. And it gets denied. Um, and it gets projected out into the movie. And now you're going to go, that's the reason why I feel upset. Right. So, so you are... Again, you know, we're core students. You know, we all, we're out of our training pants. You are not upset because of anything that happened to you as a body with another body. You are upset because you believe you have thrown away your innocence, um, divorced yourself from love and are a separate thing. And so right. our, our first step is always, we must undo projection. You know, that's that's our job, right? Because we can do, you know, Jesus can do nothing for us until we've undone projection. And that means we must embrace, I am never upset for the reason I think. That undoes projection. The only reason I am upset is because I believe I am a separate thing. And because of that, I believe God was destroyed. Heaven was destroyed. And so the way for you to undo this upset is to let go of the idea that the upset is because of what happened with your dad. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you step back and be the noticer of that upset happening without the movie story of why it's happening. You allow so you the emotion, the emotion to be there without the lying story, the projection. And then I will feel forgiveness for myself for not being able to forgive him in time. That was never a problem. That's not the problem. <laughs> okay. That's the projection. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I what you will do is you will release all those bad feelings. Okay. And then what, what is very important as well, you see, again, the problem is you have attacked your identity as spirits to identify as a body and then because you're a body instead of looking at everyone else as in vulnerable spirit you're seeing them as bodies so you're saying well my father was a body and now he's gone because his body is gone mm -hmm. okay when you practice this falling back from identifying as a body and an insane voice talking to itself and feeling your identity that you fall back into with Jesus or the Holy Spirit. When you feel that identity, that's what everyone is. There's no separateness. There are no bodies. The world never happened. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. And so, and so again, always our first step is I'm never upset for the reason I think. So I have to stop listening to the insane voice talking to itself that thinks it's a body in a world that never happened and identifies with a past that never happened. So I've got to stop listening to the one thing in the universe that doesn't know anything and is wrong about everything. And I'm going to listen to Jesus and understand this is the guilt of separateness coming up in me. I'm going to look at it without the lying stories. I'm going to allow this looking with Jesus to clear this poison out of my system. And when you when you do that, um, you will be able to see your dad as spirit and one with you. I understand. I understand and that. And that will and that will be true, Kristen. And the story that he was a body in the world and you didn't forgive him, that's not true. Okay. I I understand. And I'll watch this again to listen yeah. again. But you I I got you. Yeah. That's great. 
Because, Thank you. Because the story that you're a body and he was a body and his body did things to your body and your body couldn't forgive his body, that's a fairy tale, okay? But the Holy Spirit in you is the Holy Spirit in him. That's true, Kirsten. That's the truth. And that's the truth that sets you and him free. <sighs> Thank you. Okay. The fairy tale will imprison both of you forever and make guilt and sin and fear real forever. Right. So you drop the fairy tale, um, the projection, you allow that guilt, which had been projected onto the situation to be there without the lying stories. And you join with Jesus as thought of perfect love. And you simply notice, you witness it happening and you let the fireworks happen so that that can clear. And once it does, it is gone for eternity. And the spirit in you is the spirit in your dad. And that's what's true. The fairy tale was never true. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Kirsten. Thanks, Kirsten. <laughs> Thanks for the bravery of the question. I'm sure it's helped lots of people. Uh, where should we go next, Eli? Hey, Annette, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Hi, Annette. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> uh, well, I, I was, uh, when Marina was talking, uh, <clears throat> and to explain when she has, she was looking at, at uh, what never happened, uh, and she felt she couldn't get out of it. Uh, could she say, I would, <clears throat> I would see love instead of this. I would see peace instead of this. Could you see yeah. say that? Yeah, so that, that was Ken's two expressions was you just yes. need two workbook lessons. And one is, um, I am never upset for the reason I think. Yes. And the understanding from <clears throat> that is that I'm upset because I've chosen the teacher of upset. Yes. I have chosen to be in my <clears throat> ego mind and that's why i'm upset and now i'm blaming the world so that's realization one now ken's second workbook lesson that he says was the, 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 the second of the two that you need is i can see peace instead of this what well, how can i see peace instead of this I, I i can undo the mistake i can get out of my ego mind and go back into my holy spirit mind and how do i do that i look at my ego without judging it I become yes. a noticer of it. <laughs> and that's how I choose peace. Because I because I choose my identity as the noticer and not what I'm noticing. And that's peace. Yes. yes. Well, that wasn't my, my first question. My question mm -hmm. was, I, I have problem. I was always told to be grounded. Mm -hmm. To be in your body and be grounded. Yes. Uh, but I feel it's very difficult to feel and and grounded. When, when the body's not here, I mean, I, I, I have to be in this body and feel the body, uh, mm -hmm. and, but, but there's no body. <laughs> yes, that's a really interesting and a really good and important question. And just before I answer it, can you see me on the screen, Annette? Yes, I can see you. Oh, okay, because I still can't see me on my screen for some bizarre reason. But anyway, that's good. It's working. Uh, okay, let's deal with that. Um. <laughs> OK, um, I would have read Eckhart Tolle in the past. And this is before I really applied myself to the course. Um, and he used to, he 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 had to when he awoke. Um, he one of the things he was aware of was this. Um, this vibration throughout his entire body. And it was almost like he was simultaneously aware of his whole body once and the whole thing vibrated. And so Eckhart used to teach people. I guess his reasoning was when I, you know, here I am and I have, you know, I am awake. I'm in my right mind. I'm awake in my right mind and I don't identify with a wrong mind anymore. And one of the things I'm aware of is this vibration throughout my entire body. And so his reasoning was if I teach people to put their attention on their left hand and um, put their attention on the right hand and put their attention on their left foot and their right foot, and then to move their attention throughout their entire body, they'll begin to feel that sort of like vibration. Um, and 
I have a bit. So this was when I had anxiety and I used to try and do that in order to to sort of like because I look at one of the obvious benefits of that is that it takes your attention off the insane voice talking to itself in your mind. OK, so that's yes. instantly the benefit. Yes. Of it. Um, however, I, I, it wasn't very effective for me. And I had sort of forgotten about it um, until. I had gone through this practice of being in the cinema with Jesus and clearing the anxiety disorder that I had and then feeling this sense of like love and peace in my mind. And then I suddenly realized I have that tingling all over my body. <laughs> the point I want to make to you is when you are in your right mind, um, you would, it, it, it's not um, a Lord um, it's not it's not that you have dissociated from from anything except a separate identity. It doesn't mean you've dissociated from your body. If anything, you have a heightened sense of your body. Yes, but but when when <clears throat> when I'm in the cinema with with Jesus, I find it difficult to think of being in the cinema with Jesus and then being in the body at the same time. <laughs> yes, and this is something I wanted. This is something I've been trying to. I've, I've been trying to wean people off um, the visualizing of a cinema and being in a cinema in your mind. And, and and I'd like you to practice this for me right now, because that's a great place to start. But this is what we meant a few weeks ago when we said we're going to take off the training pants. <laughs> uh, yes. I'm going to put on our big girl pants. And it's this. <clears throat> the, way, the way I would now like you to understand this is that you are in the cinema with Jesus in your mind and the movie screen is everything that's coming in your eyes. That's the screen. You are not off in an imaginary cinema in your mind looking at an imaginary screen with pictures on it. I want you to lose that now. And instead, I want you to be exactly what your eyes are seeing now. That's the movie screen. OK, what what I see now, now uh, here around me yes. and I see you. Yes, it's I am cinema. on your screen right now. It's the cinema. That's the cinema. Okay. Okay. So, and Jesus is sitting here next to me. Um, no. Oh, yeah, in the mind. <laughs> you, yeah. You go, I mean, look, these are only symbols, right? Because awareness, yes, I, I know. the okay. noticer is actually not in the dream at all, right? It's outside the dream. So the seat of self is not within the dream. However, it would be useful if you could imagine that the cinema is you falling back from, you know, in, in, back here. Okay? Yeah. Um, in your mind, not in the room. Yes, yes. Okay? And then what your eyes are showing you, that's the movie screen. Yes. And in front of the movie screen is, um, well, part of the movie screen is the hands that you can see in front of you. That's on the movie screen. Yes. Okay? Yeah, yes. it's the movie screen. It's not you. It's the movie screen. Okay. Yes. And in front of the movie screen um, is all of the thoughts and emotions and feelings that are going on inside of you. And you're back further than that with Jesus, simply noticing the movie and the thoughts and the feelings that are going on. But I'd like people to wean themselves off this idea of going to a cinema in your mind with an imaginary movie screen with things on it. And I, and I want you to understand the world that your eyes are showing you right now is the movie screen and Jesus is in your mind and you're looking at that world with Jesus. OK. I, I, and you're I looking at and yeah. And you're looking at your body there, part of the movie. And you're looking at all the feelings and thoughts that are going on in that body. And you are the noticer with Jesus in behind that. Does that make sense? Yes. But but then 
am I grounded when I, when I do that? <laughs> yeah, because... Okay. Um, okay, ungrounded means you are off with your mind flying. Yes. That's what ungrounded is, right? Yes. So when In I... other words, yeah. So, yeah. so you're not... You're not doing that. You are watching a movie of your body and its thoughts and its feelings in the world. Okay. You are not I think, I, yeah, I, off I think in the I stratosphere. It. Yes. Yeah. So you're not I think off. I got it. <laughs> yeah. So you're not off in your mind going, this is what I need to do. And I got to do this next week. And I got to blah, 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 blah. That's ungrounded. Okay. Yeah. Or, okay. you know, and even spiritually, spiritually, we can become ungrounded, but this is not our practice. You are watching a movie of your body in the world and the thoughts and the feelings that are happening. This is a heightened sense of awareness of your body and what it's thinking and what it's um, feeling and what it's doing in the world. Okay. Thank you. And really, <laughs> and, 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 and really, all you need to do is focus on the fact that you are sharing all those sensory inputs with Jesus. Yes. Okay. I think I got it. <laughs> Good. Let us know how you get on with that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, where shall we go next, Daylight? <laughs> okay, Donna Armstrong, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Donna. Stage is yours. Hi. I am brand new uh, with you and welcome. Um, thank you. Everything that you're saying is making is resonating so powerfully with me, but my fear seems to be the opposite of everybody else's. And I, but it isn't, I'm sure because it's a, anyway, my challenge, I, I seem to do really well with upset and I, I, I can really become aware and I can really step back and I can, but I, I'm so afraid to lose the love. For example, my, my sons, mm -hmm. the love that I feel, that's my ego too. And, no. and when I go, no. oh, no. thank you. No, no. Um, this is, okay, this is a tricky one. Let's see if we can, we can um, still this. Um, love is what you are, Donna, when you are not identifying as Donna. Okay. You are love. All right. Now, um, so let's put it this way. You know how, have you ever had an experience where, um, where you watch a movie about the triumph of the human spirit, someone who is very physically handicapped and overcomes lots of challenges and they like succeed at the end. And you are just in tears of like joy and upliftment at the end. Have you ever had that experience? Yes. Yes. Have you ever had a similar experience when you look at, I, I don't know if you're a dog or a cat person, but like a cat having kittens or a dog having puppies or, and you get that sense of expansiveness and like, it's like a sense that, dear God, there's goodness in the world, all is well on some level. It may only last a few seconds, but can you, can you, can you yes, hear what I'm saying to you? Okay. Mm -hmm. That is the Holy Spirit. That is your right mind. Thank you. You. okay i thought you said all thoughts were this were not me so thank you i needed to all thoughts you. aren't you the idea um Eckhart Tolle has a lovely quote uh let me see if i can grasp it from the shreds in my mind um oh, i can't begin, i can't remember the beginning of it Anyway, the, the, the end of it is um, your love is not outside you. Um, you cannot lose it and it cannot leave you. It is not attached to some outer person or event. Okay, so the story that I love my children more than I love anyone else, that's bullshit, right? <laughs> that's your ego, okay. okay? Because love is one. And love is never special. In other words, love, when you connect with love, um, it is the same love for everyone when you're operating from your right mind, okay? Um, so, so the story 
that the hierarchy of illusions that says, I love my children more than I love, you know, my neighbor's children. <laughs> that's that's ego shit, right? <laughs> okay. However, love itself is never a lie. Okay. That feeling of love in your mind, that that is the Holy Spirit. And every so often, the clouds in your mind will just sort of part or the insane voice talking to itself will fall still for a moment and the sun will come out. The sun that is your true nature will come out and it is love. Okay. Um, now, so so love is the only thing that's real. <laughs> but we do have to begin letting go. So we see that the character, so you see, you know, you're not being asked to stop extending love to your children, but you are being asked to, to understand that that love, um, you know, you need to move to a place where that love is for everyone equally. I, I found it in one place because my boys are both very different, unique individuals. Mm -hmm. But when mm -hmm. I, when I, the love I feel is one spot. It's one thing. It's it's not a separate kind of love. It's not a different love. It's exactly my son's. My it's yes. like son. Yes. That's that's what you. Yeah. So so you're not being asked to give up love. <laughs> the course is not about giving up love. <laughs> the course is about falling back into your right mind where there is a love there that will knock your socks off um, uh, wh when it's not diluted into a love of bodies. Because once bodies come into it, the whole thing gets diluted. Uh, but 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 it's it's still love, right? Uh, but, but when you undo the blocks to love awareness in your mind and you connect with that love, you see that love in everyone equally. And so just bear in mind, that's what real love is. But it doesn't mean you've never extended that love to your children. Um, um, it, but you, you need to learn how to connect with the love independent of bodies so that it can be extended to the entire sonship all the time. Does that make sense? And when you say um, not not connected to bodies you also mean not to sunrises and not to kittens and not to yes 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 okay because you. once you connect with that without the stories um then then actually it's like the story i tell where i looked at the butter in the restaurant and it was it was love itself um and and in the same way, I could be walk. I, I was walking on the street and saw like a dirty glove discarded on the ground, and suddenly I was reduced to tears of gratitude because I knew this love was the everything I ever thought or believed was wrong. Because the, this love is the only thing that's real, and so it's not attached to. You know, once you say this thing is beautiful, so that makes me feel love and this thing is ugly and that doesn't make me feel that's a hierarchy of illusions. So we're barking up the wrong tree. But when you connect to love itself in your mind, it extends to everyone. So the course is never asking you not to love your children. It's asking you to love the entire sonship like that. Does that make sense? Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes, so we're, we're never relinquishing love. Quite, quite the contrary. We're, 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 we want to identify with a love that excludes no one and has nothing to do with bodies. Yes. Thank you. Thanks a million for that, Donna. Uh, where shall we go next then, Eli? Elaine, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. You need to unmute Elaine. No, I still need an unmute. Yeah, you need to unmute. She says one minute. So shall we go to Mona and then we can come back to Elaine? Yes, go ahead, Mona. Yes. You can unmute yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, Mona. Is it your first time joining us on the Zoom? First time. First time. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I love the, the your consistency and the straight way that you're looking at it. 
And I just wanted to um, share some or maybe add some things uh, to some of the things that were said before. Um, first of all, I recognize that tingling, the body tingling yeah. <laughs> that you mentioned. <laughs> Um, not only the body tingling, but when I am in that, in the observer, that's what I call it, but it doesn't really matter in my right mind, um, I lose sensations of the body. I feel like almost as if it's a holograph and air can move through it. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I'm not in that state all the time. <laughs> No, none of us are. <laughs> if I am, then I don't need to be here, right? Nice. Um, but I'm finding that I'm in that state more often than not, which is beautiful. Yeah. Really beautiful. And what I wanted to tell Annette about the grounding, she said something about, you know, grounding in the body and all that. Um, I remember when I would share spiritual experiences in the past and all that, some friends would say, you need to be grounded. <laughs> like it's wrong to experience what I'm experiencing, right? That's how I took it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but what came to me is, no, you are to be grounded, but you are to be grounded in spirit, mm -hmm. not in the body. Yes. As I'm listening, you know? The other thing is that I'm experiencing, and I'm just sharing this to um, to get your feedback or to you know point me in the right direction if I'm off into something else. But um, I'm experiencing the lessons that I am studying now um, as actually I'm realizing that these lessons are not for the ego. They were really never for the ego. It's for the observer, the aware self to be reminded. Does that make sense? Mm. Um. They're not the lessons. I know the book is written in uh, on two different levels because, of course, we he meets us where we are. Mm -hmm. I would say that the course is a book of lies mm. but they're very helpful lies because <laughs> it's mm -hmm. part of the illusion okay mm -hmm. jesus says um salvation can be seen as nothing more than the estate escape from concepts yes now what that means then is mm. salvation is nothing more than freedom from having a concept of anything yes and that you can simply be that that pure witness mm. that imposes nothing of the past on what it is that you're witnessing. And Jesus mm -hmm. says that's that's salvation. So the course and all of its lessons are illusory concepts that will bring us to a point of readiness to drop all concepts. And once we've done that, mm. we forget the course. That's why Jesus says, forget yeah. this world, forget yeah. this course and come with holy empty hands unto your God. So what does it mean, mm -hmm. holy empty hands? It means nothing in my mind, no concepts. I bring nothing from the past. There's no past learnings. I impose nothing I learned from the past on what is there right now. That's the real world. So I would see all the lessons then as, you know, because we can't say they're lessons for the right mind because the right mind doesn't need lessons. I would say that they are pointers and illusory concepts to bring us to an experience of being the right mind and then no concept matters mm. okay that's uh interesting so the the reason i'm bringing that up is because my experience of the lesson is extremely different than it's ever been mm -hmm. um it's almost like i am I guess I'm stepping into the right mind as I'm doing the lesson. Yeah, that's the point. So you're yeah, and re realizing yeah. as I repeat, let me see forgiveness for what it is. This is today's lesson, right? I'm I'm in my right mind, and I see no point for forgiveness. <laughs> There's nothing to forgive. We see being in your right mind <laughs> is forgiveness. Exactly. Forgiveness. There's nothing so, to forgive. So 
So forgiveness is looking at the ego without judging it. Now, yes. if you're in your right mind, you're a non-judgmental observer. And yes. that is forgiveness. So yes. that's the point. Yes. So, so again, just to tie that mm. together, we're saying the same thing, which is that the lessons are illusory concepts bringing you to a point of readiness to let all concepts go so you can be hold and witness with no judgment. And okay, that makes sense uh, about yeah. letting go of even the lessons and the book yes. and all of that. Yeah, when you're this in course, your right mind, come and hold forget it. Empty it. Hands. Yes. Another thing I just wanted to um, mention um, a long time ago, the way I would touch base with that love that we're talking about, that is really indescribable, mm -hmm. um, is by simply looking at something or someone and i'll give you an example without any preconceived ideas yes no concepts no preconceptions so you yes. could practice this i've done it many times in the past and i no longer need to sit and focus on it but um just simply by looking i, I was sitting in the car and having my lunch because i love to go outdoors i'm in florida <laughs> having my lunch and I looked at a tree that was right in front of me at a distance, but right in front of me, the whole tree. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at that tree with no uh, inner narrator. Yeah. <laughs> Without that voice talking to itself and describing mm -hmm. the tree, because mm -hmm. I guarantee you, if you look at tree, you're going to, if you're minding your mind, you're going to notice that there's a narrator going, oh, look how beautiful the tree is. Yes. Oh, look at the leaves and look at how, mm -hmm. blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. okay. Mm -hmm. Without any of that, without any preconceived ideas, without even a label of a tree, no concepts. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, your heart will explode. Yes. It just I, goes. In my second Miracle Monday talk, um, Sharon, who I saw on the line earlier on, um, um, I, I, I did an exercise with people whereby you pick something from the room like the cup and you allow it to be. Exactly. Um, you, 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 you drop all your preconceptions about it. You drop all your you know, thoughts about it. You look at it with no judgment whatsoever. And, and, you know, Sharon um, came forwards and went, oh my God, I felt the love for the first time. Yes. Um, and so the point you see, and, and it's, it's really important to understand the mechanics of that. The thing is your ego cannot look at anything without judging it. And so if you are looking at, at, at something, if you are allowing it to be, you're not in your ego mind because your ego mind can't do that. You've gone into your right mind and yes. love waits for you there. Love yes. waits for you in your right mind. Again, Jesus says, you know, this dream is a dream of judgment. So to awaken, you must stop judging. And and that's what it means. Uh, ultimately, in the real world, we allow everything to be what it is with, with no opinion or judgment on it. Yes. We, we watch yes. the fit, dream figures come and go, shift and change, suffer and die, yes. and we're not deceived by what we see. We don't impose past learnings or opinions or judgments or anything on it. So what you're saying is perfect. And, and again, it's important to understand the mechanics of it. If I'm looking at something with no judgment of it, I am no longer in my ego mind. I have left my ego mind. I am yes. in my noticer mind. I am with the Holy Spirit. And of course, there's love there. Yes. yes. Perfect. And then you cannot help but extend that love. Mm. You know? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You can't help it. This is why you see this big smile on my face that I just want to share. And if and the anybody's shocker for not me, experiencing it, I want you to yeah. experience it. <laughs> and the shocker for me, even when you say I'm extending it, was I kind of always thought when you connected with that love, you you had to like sort of almost consciously extend it. No. And what, what shocked me was that I actually saw the love in the world and went, oh, my God, and then worked it's out afterwards. Love. Oh, I, I extended that there. <laughs> so it's not even a conscious thing where you it's extend it. It's not a it. conscious like, extension, goes, but yeah, I guarantee yeah. you everybody will feel it. That's if it. you're in That's their it. space, everybody will feel it. It's beautiful. Absolutely. You yeah, know? Because and because. I love Keith. I love the way you're describing, you know, stepping back because that's exactly mm -hmm. how I see it. That's stepping yeah. back. I feel Falling like back. the real self is back here. Me right? too. Most of the time. Yes. Yeah. And then I feel it most of the time here, even when yeah. I think I'm in the ego or maybe I am. And yes. I don't know. 
uh, but I can feel it. Yes. And when I said to me that always felt like Jesus, but now it's not feeling that at all. It's feeling like me, the big M. Yes. The I, I am. Which the Jesus am. was always a placeholder for. Yes. And yes. you lose your, the, it's not the self. We talk about, you know, the higher self or the real self. It's not even the real self because it is not specific. Mm -hmm. It's not specific. It's not me. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. all. All it's everything. All. Yes, it's everything. Yes. yes. So it's the not light, me. the light in your mind is shining in everyone and everyone. Everyone. Yes. Yeah, everyone. Anyway, I right. just wanted to share these things. Thank you very and, much for that, Mona. Um, I, I'm going to move swift. Yeah, yes. go ahead. No, no. Thank you okay. so much. So let, first of all, Eli, um, is it OK that we do Elaine and then Jason? Is there anything else we need to deal with or can we draw a line there? Because we're as we usual. We can draw running a line well there. Time. I was going to bring okay, that up. Very good. So, yes, there's nothing so, more we need Elaine, to deal with in Give chat. us a nice, concise question or, or <laughs> statement, please. Uh, you, okay. The stage is yours. Go ahead. All right. Uh, quickly, Kristen, if she's still there, there's a recent post about World One and it helped me with, you know, it's about if you're not for anyway read the recent posts on the, for everyone it's a very helpful post about when you think you are forgiving someone and you it's all one anyway i had to i trying to be rushed i mean <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is for grounded i come into groundedness now when i read something in the morning that grounds me Okay, uh, so as far as being grounded, that is, so maybe I'm more spirit than body. I mean, I am, but that helps to ground my whole presence. Uh, and the, and just recently, okay, this is might be ugly to some people, but I play with rusty hardware because I just look at it and I I love it and I make art with it because to me it's not rusty hardware. And someone will say you know, that's a bicycle chain, or, you know, that's a chain that went on a tire. And I say, oh, well, I don't have any definitions for things because they just bring joy to me, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like non-conceptual. That's not what my comment's about. My <laughs> comment, those are just feedbacks. My comment is about this. You're taking the gloves off. I would love that. Now, come to the group because we have a split mind. Want to focus on the right mind and not the illusion and not the ego. This might be a trigger for some people, but why is it then that as a group, a non-duality, a group that's learning non-duality and learning to hone it, why do we recognize birthdays and other illusionary things in the world and as if they're real? Birthdays, Mother's Day, all the stuff of the illusion, why do we bring it to the sacred space of the group? That's my question. Because okay. I get confused. So, because I okay. want no, to I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get what um, I'm saying? I, so You're taking the can... gloves off, so I'm just throwing it out there. So... We're going to um, tie together two ideas. Uh, one way of understanding ungroundedness is that your preoccupation with spirituality makes you ineffective in the world. In other words, things aren't getting done. Um, you're not taking things in the world seriously. You have a lack of interest because your mind's kind of like off uh, floating around the stratosphere. OK, and this is what ungrounded is. Right um, now, the course is not a spirituality that's on grounding. The course is not about going into the light and frolicking in the light with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Not at all, right? That is not what this course is about. The sole purpose of the right mind is to undo the wrong mind. So the only thing you do when you're in your right mind is spend time with the ego. And that's why the right mind is a non-judgmental observer of our ego with the Holy Spirit. That's his purpose. 
And so with other spiritualities, there's this danger where you're like doing meditations and you're like leaving the planet and you're going off into the galaxies. That's ungrounded, right? A Course in Miracles is not ungrounded. We are not frolicking in the light. We are joining with the light to look on the darkness. So that's, we're bringing our wrong mind to our right mind. We're bringing the darkness to the light. We're not hiding in the light, which will be ungrounded. So A Course in Miracles is not an ungrounded practice. Now, to tie that together with what you said in terms of the birthdays and everything else, um, you have to do something when you're here. And if you make it your salvation that we must observe birthdays and we must observe Mother's Days and we must do that, then that's an error, right? Because you are giving the world power over your frame of mind. On the other hand, if you decide we cannot have birthdays, we cannot have Mother's Days, you have made that your salvation. Okay, so the way we want to look at this is that um, you allow the world to be exactly what it is with no desire that it be different. That's the course practice. And but 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 if I insist the world has to be a certain way so I can be at peace, it, that just means I'm in my wrong mind because there's no peace. And if I decide I need to change the world in order to have peace, that just means I'm in my wrong mind. OK, so so really our course practice is allowing the world to be exactly what it is and all its apparent glory and horror. And, but but it has no effect on the love and peace of the Holy Spirit in my mind. That's what's primary. Um, so seek not to change the world, seek to change your mind about the world. We don't need to change birthdays and Mother's Days or anything like that, but we also don't need to cling to them and sort of like need them. So it's it's really about not giving the world any power over us. All our peace is from falling back and dipping into the love of the Holy Spirit in our mind and extending that to the world exactly as it is. So does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, it makes sense that we continue as normal and um, that's part of life. Yes. So in other words, we, we don't make keeping the world the way it is our salvation and we don't make changing the world our salvation because our peace comes from our right mind and it simply gets connect, gets projected, extended to the dream. But we can add the caveat that that is not the source of any kind of real happiness. Nothing in the dream is the source of any real happiness. There's no right. cause in the dream. Yes, there's no cause in the world. Perfect. Thank you very much, guys. Okay, sorry we've run mad late as usual. Thank you very much for everyone's attention. And um, we will do it all again next Sunday. And I will see you all in the group. So wherever you are and whatever you're doing, have a brilliant Sunday. But for the love of God, watch yourself having a brilliant summer um, Sunday with, with Jesus in the cinema. Um, be the noticer, be the noticer of your world and thank your you, thoughts Keith. and feelings. Uh, thank welcome. you, Keith. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. So much. Thank thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.